Hello ZebraHerd, welcome to Wargroove. This is a super cool strategy RPG that I've been waiting for for over a year now. It is finally out on the Nintendo Switch and a couple of other consoles and is easily one of my top ranked most anticipated 2019 indie games. So I hope we have a lot of fun with this one. If you've ever played Advanced Wars, you'll be very familiar with the gameplay here and hopefully you'll appreciate that. So yeah, we'll be trying to play through the single player story mode. That'll be fun. I'm notoriously bad at anything that relates to strategy, so I'm probably gonna get my butt kicked, but it'll be a fun time regardless. So let's get started with Wargroove. All right, so we're gonna be getting started with the campaign. Fight foes as you journey across Orania. Orania? Orania. Okay, let's go. And, oh, what's happening? One rainy night at Cherry Stone Castle. This weather is giving me the spooks. Did you hear that? Cut it out, it's just thunder. But I'm uh, going to patrol the throne room. Hey, wait for me. <laughs> oh no. Who's patrolling this room? Uh oh, who's this? <laughs> Cowards jumping at shadows and dropping their guard. This is Sigrid. Huh. Turn one. So are we just playing a Sigrid here? Getting to the king shouldn't be much of a challenge. <laughs> there he is, all alone in his chambers. How convenient. The fewer guards I dispatch, the quicker this will be. But some unfortunate wretches still stand in my way. I'll start by defeating that one over there. Okay, so move this way, attack, and go here. I know the very, very basics of the game. I did test play it a little bit to see if I'd like it. Oh yeah, I forgot they talk. So they do have a little bit of dialogue. I'll try to keep an ear out for it. And now it's the king's turn. He doesn't know we're here though. It's time. Time my daughter learned the truth. But how do I tell her? Turn two. All right, well, I like our character so far. She's pretty cool. I mean, she seems evil. I'll make my way towards the king's chambers. So we gotta do this and move here. Wait, gotcha. Now it's the king's turn again. Interesting. But this is a game with a long uh, storyline as, as far as I know. Like it has a long main campaign. Mercia, a long time ago, before Cherry Stone was Cherry Stone. Hmm, no. Turn three. Alrighty, but yeah, I wanna warn people, I'm gonna be very bad at this game. This is laughably easy. It is for her, but it isn't for me. I'm really bad at strategy games, so if you guys ever wanna give me some advice, I'll definitely be all ears for it, and I'll try to How apply it as much as possible. Foolish. How foolish. <laughs> she is just taking these guys out super easy. Turn three. So he's writing a letter to his daughter or something? There was once a kingdom called Cacophony and a war known as the Great Dissonance. Seems like it. Let's go ahead and keep moving this way. Could I just go through the door and get myself into loads of trouble? That actually would be really funny. Because I totally mess up the very obvious tutorial. Back to the king. This knowledge is too great a burden, Mercia. About a war? I mean, shouldn't that be common knowledge? I don't know. Hmm, this castle is vast. If I access the overview screen, I can get a glimpse of its true extent. I just need to select an unoccupied tile and pick overview. Alrighty, overview, here we go. This screen provides me with objectives and statistics. Oof, so many humans, how unpleasant. Still, I can avoid most of them, so she's not a human. I could probably tell by the ears. As my objective says, I'm here for the king. I can close this now and return to my task. All right, so map objectives, assassinate the king of cherry stone. Wow, we are really evil. Time to defeat a few more hapless guards and take my way to the king's chamber. All right, let's get to it. Run over this way and take this guy out in one hit, no less. Are you afraid? I think they're very Goodbye. afraid. <laughs> Goodbye. That's interesting. So is this the character we play through the entire game? I don't think so. I think we play as multiple my characters through the game. Blue. I'll start slowly. My darling Bluebird, I need to tell you something. See, he really is writing a letter. So let's move this way. Almost got this guard here. 
But first, it's her turn again. Turns sort of jump back and forth pretty quickly. It's a very long story about how something that happened that a, a very long time ago. Turn seven. One more guard to get through. So let's go ahead and get him. Seems like another hit, one hit takedown. This is tiresome. <laughs> very tiresome, apparently. Okay, so it's just him now. Turn seven. <sighs> a very long time ago indeed. Why can't the past stay in the past? Who knows? Is this lady a part of his past? Because the past is about to become the present. Hello, how are you? <laughs> At last. You, how did you? Oh my. What? Sigrid? <laughs> oh. Humans are so frail. Do you understand what you've done? You'll start a war. <sighs> war, the inane squabble of children. Where is the key? Safe hands. You'll, you'll never have the, the uh, you never have it. The key is in safe hands, far from the grasp of a monster like you. <laughs> safe hands, before you die, understand this. Nothing is safe for me. Listen. You're making a mistake. Hush now. Oh no. Oh no, there goes the king. That is not good. Still, the key eludes me. No matter. It's close, I can feel it. What is the key? Poor king. Victory, yay! It's sort of a little bittersweet though. All right, so our results, total turns eight, Venus defeated four, Venus lost zero, and stars earned three. So I think that's the maximum amount of stars you can earn. Yes. Well done, princess. Your skill with the cherry blade improves yet further. <laughs> Thank you. Oh wait, that was Mercia, that was, no, that was the dollar. Oof, and Caesar, super cute, look at this little pup. It's all right, Caesar, it's just one of the royal guard. The Lord Emmerich. Hmm? Is this important? You disturb the princess's lessons. The king, my lord, the king has been killed. What? what? No. Oh, father. I'm sorry. Mercia, I'm so sorry. I don't know if I should re read the voices that they do. Who did this? Sir, the assailant appears to have been a v vampire. The Felheim Legion. Princess, Mercia. The murder of your father is an act of war. We must defend the kingdom. War? We're at war. Oh no. So there we go, the Cherry Stone Castle, the prologue. Uh, congratulations, you unlocked additional lore about Emmerich. Oh cool. So now we have additional lore. Where will we access that? I am not sure, but we're all marching this way. Oh, we can move around. The breach, an unsure Mercia faces her first test of as monarch of Cherry Stone. Okay, so let's play this mission. Oh, look at that, she's the queen now. She has the crown. Several months later. My queen. Congratulations on your coronation, Queen Mercia. Emmerich, do you really think I'm ready to be a queen? I have no doubt. You are your father's daughter. Hmm. I hope you're right. <laughs> your majesty, Felheim scouts have breached the border. What? They're here in Cherry Stone? Let's go. I can do this. <laughs> I know you can. Oh, there goes the crown. Oh, is he gonna pick it up? Put on a head. I'm the queen now. That would have been so funny. Oh. Wait, your majesty, your crown. Oh, he's chasing after. So where are we going? Turn one. Oh, look at these <laughs> skeleton dudes. These skeletal warriors are Felheim troops. We must defeat them all to secure this region. We should begin by attacking the closest dread swords with our unit of swordsmen. Right, let's get this over and done with. So we gotta select this guy right here, move him to the trees, and then attack. Gotcha. So Mercia versus Felheim. So Felheim is just sort of, I guess, another kingdom? Oh, and they attack back a little bit. Notice the numbers that have appeared next to the two battling units. Yeah, yeah there's a little number next to each of them. An eight and a five. These represent the unit's health. They appear to appear when it drops below 95%. The number five indicates that the, the dread sword is down at around 50% health. Hmm. And my swordsman is down to about 80% health. Got it. Very well. 
Then let's get, uh, let's attack the Dread Sword with our second swordsman. So let's move over this way and finish him off. Oh, attack the Dread Sword. So 57% more damage. Gotcha. Wait, uh, my queen, may I interject for just a moment? You already have been. When selecting a target, a damage preview will appear above its head. The damage preview indicates what damage will be dealt by both units during combat. Sounds handy. You see, the health of a unit suggests more than how close it is to defeat. The more damage the unit takes, the weaker its attack power becomes. So a healthy unit is a stronger unit. Indeed, but it looks like your swordsman will do just fine here. So the more damage we take, the less damage we'll be doing. A stronger troop is always good. There we go, we got those guys taken out. There is more up the path though. Turn one for them, what are they gonna do? Ooh, more units are popping up. What? More undead? What? It seems like they're not giving up quite yet. Oh, they're moving over. I don't like it. Turn two. She's super cool. She has an interesting scar across her face. I don't know where she got that from. Friendly reinforcements have arrived. Just in the nick of time. Look, it seems like we've provided with a new ty unit type, pikemen. This might be a good time for you to learn about critical oh. hits. Critical hits? Yes. All units have conditions under which their attacks are stronger. We call these attacks critical hits. I've never heard of those. Do not worry, my queen. This information is easy to find. Let me show you how to find information about a unit's crit. Okay, so I guess we gotta go up to this unit and press B. Tile info. Uh, this is the tile info screen. Here we can find useful information about our selected unit. This part gives us a good overview of the unit. Hmm, the pikeman crits one adjacent to the another pikeman. Okay, so as you can see here, slower, more powerful infantry critical hit when adjacent to another pikeman. So if they're next to each other, they can become even stronger. You can bring up this info of, on any unit, terrain, or structure. Use it often and you'll learn fast. All right, I'll make sure to check it often. When you're ready, you can close this window. So they're spearmen, but I thought that said it was pikemen. I think a pike and a spear is sort of the same thing. They're effective against certain things and vulnerable against others. Uh, the road, I guess, is what the terrain they're on right now. Stone roads that speed along big wooden wheels but offer a little protection. Got Very you. Well. We should make sure that the pikemen, that the, not the pikemen, the pikemen <laughs> stick together. That's a different game. <laughs> Got it. Where's Alamar? Um, so we probably, yeah, we wanna move him here so that they're adjacent to one another so that they do that critical damage. We've lined up our first pikeman. Let's attack the dread sword with our second pikeman. So we wanna get you and then attack this guy. And it's 120% damage, there's a guaranteed takedown. Let me draw your attention to the damage preview once more. Oh, the arrow is flashing. Well spotted, a flashing arrow in the damage preview is a good sign. It indicates that you're about to land a critical hit. All right, well, will we do it? We will, nice. And they don't attack at all, so if we get the first strike in, we could potentially not even take any damage. Thanks to the placement of the first yeah. pikeman, the second pikeman deal, dealt a critical hit. <laughs> she learns fast. <laughs> oh, wait, I didn't read that, whoops. When encountering a new unit type, it's important to learn about their crit. I'll leave you to defeat the rest of these Felheim troops. Thank you. Thank you, Emmerich. I couldn't do this without you. So what are we going to do now? Defeat the invading uh, Felheim forces. So we could go up to this guy and probably do some good damage to him. 60% here, so we'll take some damage as well. But it should be fine, because with the other group of troops, we should be able to finish you off. Hopefully we can do 40% damage, I would hope. I would imagine. Let's find out. Uh, 47%, so that should be enough. They're only at 37, so go at them. And that is all we can do this turn, I think. Looks like it, so they're gonna move now. Turn two. Uh, Felheim versus Mercia. Mercia, I think it's Mercia, yeah. And they attack at least a little bit, so that's good. So what do we wanna do here? I mean, obviously there's only like one set of spearmen to really take out, but we can do that critical hit to them again, which will do what? 41% damage. So what might be smarter since this unit right here is a little bit higher on health, why don't we make you move and wait? I'll put you here to attack and you'll do 90% because you have more units and thus you'll be stronger. Gotcha. So that's pretty cool. And with that, that's the last of them. Well done, my queen. Oh, look at, 
Look at Caesar. He is one adorable pooch. Who he did it. A good start, but Felheim won't stop there. We must remain vigilant. <laughs> They'll be back. Yes. Yes, and in greater numbers. Uh. A whole horde of skeletons. Indeed, and much else besides. I'd forgotten you had so little experience with the undead. <sighs> Cherry Stone is normally so peaceful. I've never seen them here before. But now they're coming, and they won't stop. An undead army. All undead but one. We've spoken in your lessons of their leader, Valder. A living man, man, and... Yeah. And a necromancer of great power, I haven't forgotten. Well, we should make a move. The undead are likely to be advancing upon the, uh, the uh, other parts of the kingdom. Or uh. all, they are likely, not unlikely. Emmerich, do you think Valder will come to Cherry Stone himself? Yes. Yes, your majesty, I do. Huh, that's a bit worrying. All right, Caesar, let's go. Oh, <laughs> here's the guy with the crown. Your majesty, wait! I don't think she needs to crown that badly. Unless the crown has like some kind of magical power. Victory, we got it! So, we got another S rank for that one, very cool. And we'll tackle one more level in today's episode. Congratulations, you unlocked additional lore about Mercia. Very cool indeed. So what's going on over here in Act One, Mission Two? A plague of skeletons. The Felheim invasion begins in earnest. Play the mission. Oh no, I think these are just civilians running away. Getting chased by skeletons. But the guards are fast after them. And what about these guys? <laughs> no. The kingdom's overrun with Felheim soldiers. We have to do something. We will hold what, what land we can. Maybe if we... No! Not so fast! Who are you? <laughs> Whoa, that's a really hoarse voice. I'm the person that's going to smash, bash, and pulverize call you! Ragna! You can call me Ragna! Uh. She does not say anything, she yells it all. I'm all right. Fight me! All right, I'll let you do the talking. I want my voice to stay where it is. <laughs> oh my gosh, already doing what I did made my throat hurt. Okay, so, yeah, it looks like she's taking a village or something. And we get turn one. Did you see that? The Felheim Hordes just captured a village to the west. They'll attempt to claim the neutral village to the east next unless we stop them. Then let's stop them. Yes. Luckily, a Cherry Stone Ranger is here to help us. Rangers are units that can attack enemies from a distance. Let's move it into a position from where it can attack and then any approaching undead. Sounds good. So we need to select him. For whatever reason, the reticle always starts on the top left. It's a little weird. But um, yeah, let's go ahead and move it here. Wait, and we're good. From this position, our ranger can attack any enemies approaching from the west. Then, when you want to end your turn, select an unoccupied map tile and select end turn. All right. So turn two. Oh my, he's moving over. All right, so before we move with anything else, let me go ahead and check out the, the critical. Are you remembering to check the unit info screen to learn about critical hits? Yeah, <laughs> good. Then you'll know that rangers crit if they attack without moving. We'll attack the dreadsword without moving the ranger now. Okay, so first off, yeah, I can't check him now because he wants me to do the tutorial. We don't want the archer to move, so we should select the tile they are standing on. Okay. Now we need to select the tile from which to perform the, the attack. But since we don't want the archer to move, we simply select the same tile again. Attack, and then you, got you. We need to attack the dreadsword without moving our ranger. Oh, that's what I was trying to do. Right here, 101%, that's perfect amounts. Very good, so luckily it seems like our things will be very protective with these rangers, that's good. Yeah. We did it. We may have defeated the so those soldiers, but it's not over yet. The enemy owns a barracks. This will enable them to recruit new units. Fortunately, we have access to a bar barracks of our own. We should select to recruit a new unit at once. Okay, I'm on it. So let's go over this way. And it's like this. You need to recruit a new swordsman. So we have three things we can choose from. This barracks will let you recruit three different unit types. Swordsmen, pikemen, and rangers. That's right, but due to our current funds, can only afford a swordsman right now. A single swordsman can make a big difference. Let's recruit one now. Alrighty, so basic infantry useful for capturing structures, critical hit when adjacent to its commander. 
which I don't think we have commanders in this battle. That is like our main character, Mercy. It should be a commander, I think. Know that each barracks can only recruit a single unit per turn. Right, I'll make sure to remember that. So let's get to it, turn three. Well, actually, no, it's her turn to attack. Gotcha, or she just moves. I don't know who moves first per turn, I guess. Oh, it is her, interesting. Select our new swordsman in order to move and capture the village. So, yeah, we need, oh, this village, gotcha. I thought them meant the balloon to the left. I didn't even see this one, capture. This one right here. Move the swordsman to the w southwest and capture the neutral village. All right, we got it. So just like she did earlier with capturing that one, we'll be capturing this one. All righty. <laughs> Excellent work, my queen. Villages bring in 100 gold every turn, so they're incredibly important to the effort, to the war effort. So we have three villages and a barrack, so we should be getting 300 coins per turn. Right, because more gold means we can recruit more units. Correct, in fact, we can cripple the enemy's income by taking their village to the west. Yes. To capture the village that is owned by a different faction, we must first defeat it. Mm. Then I'll recruit more units straight away and order them towards the vill that village. Okay, so let's go ahead and get some pikemen out this time. Uh, some units are more effective than others at defeating structures such as villages. I advise you to rely on the pikemen's powerful crit for this job. All right, I'll recruit the pikemen and send them towards the enemy village. Okay, so we have this guy right here, and we'll start sending him next turn. And I probably wanna keep this guy here for now. So we'll end turn, and see what goes on. Turn four. Oh my. So they got more units coming in from the top. <laughs> what do we wanna do about that? Enemy reinforcements to the north. They'll no doubt be heading towards your northern villages. I should have known they wouldn't make this easy for us. I suggest you don't leave the northern path unattended. I'll make sure to leave a unit to protect the northern villages. Neutralize all enemy structures. Okay, so to do that, I mean, I think this, this thing is rather protected for now. So I could, actually maybe I should move this pikeman first, like here. Cause I don't know if they can like block each other off. We'll find out soon enough. Let me get a second pikeman in so that they can work together. And then I could have this guy go here. I don't know what's exactly better cause we could, let me read about mountains. Accessible only to walking and air you, uh, walking and air units, slow going, but confers high defense. Got you, so we might not be able to move as far. And same thing with like forests, right? Forests are slow going, but provide good defense and a means of avoiding vehicles. Hmm. I'm not sure. For now, we could like leave it like this, because those guys do have a little bit to travel. Like I could move you like one space over this way. I think it's good to just keep you where you are though. Um, and if that's the case, we'll move you here. Wait there. Figure that out a little bit and turn. Cause like they, I guess they could travel across the river, right? Is that something they can do? Ooh, so he gets to attack first here, which actually isn't the best. Ooh, that really hurt too. Yikes, okay. Um, So we're already down to four and everybody else is moving as well. Turn five. So can, oh, I can see where they're moving. Gotcha. So like I could attack them like this, or I could even go in the river and attack them like that. Hmm. What about you? You can't attack them from here? Huh. Yeah, I guess you can't. Weird, isn't it? I feel like I want to get another ranger out like around here maybe? Well, can we make them, we could make him move here and then attack. That might be better. I know it's not gonna do a bunch of damage. I don't think they can attack back from this distance, of course, though, so that is some great advantages. And then have this guy move out and already be able to immediately attack. But how far can this guy go? All the way to, wow, here. Okay, that's a bit to be concerned about. We'll attack, and we'll see what ends up happening. We'll do 18% damage, or no, 33% damage. They'll do 18% damage to us, right? I think so. Yikes, that's enough to almost take that guy down. But that's fine for now. We can get this first pikeman over across the water. And I wanna read about that. Only accessible to those on foot. Units attacked in a, in a river are at a distinct disadvantage. Got you. Move you over here. And I'm gonna get a second ranger set up. If I can, okay, I can just barely afford it. Perfect. Okay, turn number six. We got that guy moving out. It's actually a little bit scary at this rate. So, turn six. 
Uh, I have a couple of options for sure. Um, Cause I could do something like that. It'd be 80% damage if I were to do this. And that'd be pretty good actually. That'd be a great advantage to take. So we're about to take this village. We, we have some good pushing going on here. I'm waiting until it gets tough because I know this game is gonna get tough and I'm not gonna be prepared for it. We could try to finish them off, but it won't do enough damage. Um, for now, I'm gonna move you over and also move this ranger over as far as we can. For now, if that's this, then that's this, you know? How far can these guys move? Far, but not far enough to actually, okay, not far enough to actually take care of this village. So that's actually a pretty good situation for us. And then I might wanna get a second swordsman, put them there, and maybe, I don't know what we're gonna exactly do with them. And this guy, you know what, I might move him back here for now. That way, hmm. Okay, we'll have to see what ends up happening there. But for now, so I have some decisions to make. If I can't do anything else, I might as well do this. It will be enough to take them out though. It might be better than to just get them as low as possible. So we just don't have to deal with that next time. Just like we can, it's just one troop versus one troop. Not enough to take them down, unfortunately. But it will be enough to take that guy down. Yikes. Okay, so turn seven. You are gonna go for this, which actually might even take out this skeleton troop, the swordsman, whatever they're called when they're uh, under Felheim. There we go, so this actually could be some good stuff for us right here, because this guy's gonna move out, that guy's gonna move out. We have some options now. So I think our first goal will be to move this guy here, attack this with the extra critical, we'll be doing 83% damage. And that's good. And then with the little health it has, we should be able to go in and take it down the village and maybe not even take any damage for this set of troops. Attack, yep, just be able to take it down. How beautiful Yay! is that? So with that done. What? What? How did this happen? <laughs> Excellent, you've cleared the enemy from the village. You should capture it to secure it before Ragnar takes it back. Oh, we gotta do that, got it. So that's something to be concerned about. I'm gonna move another swordsman out as far as we can. I'm gonna definitely get you guys to attack however you can. So 91% damage right there, attack. So now they try to attack the village, they will get hurt. Oh, so close to taking them down. And what about you? Can you attack from where you are? You can't, which is unfortunate, but at the least we could get a start. This guy can move pretty far now. We can still do 75% damage from where we are though. So that's still really good damage. I like that, the rangers seem good. So at this rate, it might be good to get another set of archers and move them towards the west. Keep those guys protecting the top. So this is gonna hurt a little bit. Yikes. They can do attack back a little though. That's always good to see. I'll probably make the weaker troops go and take the village back. That should make sense, I would hope because I don't think the two pikemen are technically adjacent. They're like diagonal to each other. Hmm. Actually it wasn't so bad. Oh, we took him out, cool. Okay, so with that done, oh, everybody up there is finished. I don't know if more are going to come up though, so I'm gonna wait with what we got. Um, Lots of options. Hmm. How far can this guy go? This guy could actually get in there. Then maybe we should do that. Make this guy capture it. I'm trying to figure this out as best as I can. Because now we got that village. No! Well done. With no villages, the enemy has no income. He'll notice that a captured structure never begins with full health. In fact, it starts with the equivalent of half the capturing unit's health. So if a unit with 40% health captures a village, then the village starts with 20% health? Yes. Now we should destroy their barracks to completely remove uh, them from this yeah. region. Okay, let's do it. So it can only have a maximum of 50% health at first. So what I think I wanna do is go here and wait. And then with these guys attack and do 83% damage, it should be enough to finish them off. Yeah. That would be great. And that means she's, as long as we protect this village, she's gonna have a dwindling amount of units because she has no more uh, like incoming money. So that's very good for us. So we'll get that person out there. I might get another pikeman, seeing how our one is getting really low. That might be good. 
And then like maybe I could keep one here and move this guy over this way. Wait here for now. And end of turn. Turn number nine. Getting intense, but I think we're working this to our advantage. Turn nine. She didn't really do much there, did she? <laughs> so I'm way over here. What I need to do then is probably move this guy like this. I suppose so. Wait here and then get this guy like that and attack. We'll do 58% damage. That's okay. Not crazy good, but it's a critical. Nice, they attack back though. We don't lose any units. So I can't get over there with this guy just yet. We'll do this for now. Uh, we'll definitely start moving some more pikemen out. Oh, you know what, are you in the way? You may be. So let me do that. Oh uh, yeah, he was like, he was taking up one block, which is still a pretty big deal in this game, it seems. Even like one block of movement could be a big difference. So let's get a swordsman out. Cause like, yeah, we can see their movement. Swordsmen have four spaces of movement. So if we really want to get, get people hustling, that's gonna be our way. So with that done, let's get to turn 10. Oh, so you're gonna attack this guy, which we should have the advantage here. We already have more health than they do. Not, oh yeah, it is enough to take one of them out. Very good. So what do we wanna do with this situation? I'm thinking that we could have an archer come over and finish these guys off, just so that the distance is to our advantage. Very nice. Cause she's just about out of money, she has to be. I wanna move some of these guys a little bit closer. And same thing with you. And same thing with you, very good. Now how far can these guys move? Not very far in the woods. Like that's a good thing to keep in mind. Like this guy can move one space in the woods. This guy can move one space in the woods. But we'll inch ever so closer and attack these guys. We'll do 60% damage, which is a pretty good start. I mean these guys are just, you know, here to take down the skeletons. It's my main focus. So as long as we can get the advantage over them, that's what matters. And that seems to be all the units I really want to move at the moment. Nothing's coming in from the top though. I just I want to keep one ranger there just in case. So he's gonna attack back, but once again, we'll also be able to damage them. I wonder if enough to take them out. Oh, almost. So at this rate, there's a couple things we can do. Um, she did not spawn in any units, probably because she didn't have any. We can do 22% damage, but it will do 33% to us. But still, 22% damage is a good start. That's almost a fourth of their health. A little bit more than a fifth, almost a fourth. It's pretty good. Um. So I still can't quite get these guys out there, but we can get them pretty close, and then I can have like these guys finish these dudes off. That seems good to me. Hey hey! So with three pikemen, I can actually do some interesting criticals, because that's sort of the thing, right? If I have two pikemen here, one of them can attack, but the other one cannot, but that at least gives critical to one. But if I had three here, I could have one here, and these two right here and right here would all be having criticals. Like, that's a big deal. So I can't quite get the archer over to attack the, the stronghold or whatever it is, the barracks just yet. I know I'm mispronouncing that, but I have no clue how to properly pronounce it right now. Okay, got that. Move this pike, oh no, that's not the pike, that's a ranger. And this dude, a swordsman, out this way. Okay, end the turn with that, and hopefully this turn we can get a win, because I don't think she can spawn anything in. I think she just, oh, that was it. That's all she could do. Um, Very good for us, because now we can go over here and attack this guy and already do 75% damage. How cool is that? Got him. Aren't gonna like that very much now, are they? So, for right now, I could go in like this and get that. And that'll be a little bit more damage to it. Even though it did heal between turns, for sure. And then you can attack it. It's getting lower and lower, it's just one dude. But this is what you're here for, man. Oh, enough to take you out though, that's a shame. But you haven't moved at all. There's, it's sort of a shame though, because I can't do too much about it still. I'm gonna move him here. I would rather him be there then. And then this guy can move out pretty far. I just don't know if it's the best idea. We'll do it, we'll try it. And this guy's taking damage apparently. We'll have you wait here. And then I might as well have you finish these guys off. Hey, hey! Hey, hey! Awesome. Okay, next turn for sure we'll be able to get it. Not much I can do now. Guess I should have moved that ranger down because nothing has happened up top, but how was I what? supposed to know? 
I don't have enough gold to recruit a new unit. So yeah, they don't have anything, so they can't make a move here. That's fine with me. So I think, ah, uh, not quite. Not quite close enough to attack from where they were. So they can't land the critical, but they can still land some damage. <laughs> I like her face. I love the little reaction icons. And this should be enough. Attack for the final 22%. Go in. You guys got it. Yeah, good job. No! No! This is not happening. <laughs> Emmerich, we did it. Good work. And she's a heap on the floor. Chatter, chatter. <gasps> go away. Chatter, chatter. <sighs> I said, go away. Oh look, here's our group. Uh, huh. What are? I said go away! Oh, it's you! Yeah. Uh. I um didn't mean to disturb you. <gasps> you didn't disturb me, I was lying in wait! Huh. Uh-huh, right. Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> this isn't over! I guess it's not. Victory for us, so what is our ranking? And anyway, I guess, that's good. Okay, I was worried, because this is like, I guess like the first one where you can actually mess something up that I get a bad ranking, but we got three stars, which is all I hope for, because I think that's the maximum amount of stars you can get. Congratulations, you unlocked Felheim in the Codex. So there is still more of this act to explore, but we're gonna be exploring it in the next episode. That was just a fun little start to the story mode. I hope you guys are enjoying this game, because if you are, be sure to let me know, because we'll try to play more through this story mode and have a good time. I feel like it's gonna be a tough journey ahead, but I will keep working hard and hopefully everything will turn out okay. With that being said, thank you guys so much for watching the first episode of War Groove. If you watched this point of video, make sure you comment Zebra Groove so I know you've watched at the end that you're a Zebra-tastic viewer. Check out more episodes like this one on your screen right now or by subscribing to join the Zebra Herd. Either way, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.